Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas for SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services reInvent Conference. Um, Amazon is continuing to roll down the path of dominance in the public cloud um, and just, just absolutely extending their lead, light years ahead of the competition in our opinion, based on what we're seeing here today, and it's just continued innovation. Um, and now moving into the enterprise. Uh, but they've had a lock on the startup market going back to when I originally uh, was with those guys launching it back in the early 2000s. But the developer community loves Amazon because it's fast, it's low cost, and uh, we're here to feature a startup here. We got uh, Jonathan Chu, Quality, co-founder and CEO, and Jordan Potter, co-founder and chief operating officer. Guys, welcome to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE CUBE. It's good to be here. So yeah. startups are great. I mean, startups are, are, are bootstrapping. You guys won an award at the TechCrunch conference, um, Disrupt. Um, are you, did you win an award? You launched there. We launched there. You launched yeah, there. Yeah, you the launched finals. there. Um, but you guys are a great example of you know, how Amazon kicks ass so much with the, with the way they can just get people up and running fast. So let's just go into it. Talk about first the company you guys do. You guys target engineers, mm -hmm. test and dev, QA. Talk about the solution. Then let's talk about how you guys are wired into the cloud and how that worked for your customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Quality is a uh, cloud automation testing solution that helps companies run their automation tests extraordinarily quickly. And the goal here is to maximize engineering efficiency, because especially in the Valley, right, uh, engineers are very expensive, and also they are the core of your company and they get work done really quickly. So the faster they get out code and it's, out it's, code. A, it's the core labor. I mean, exactly. you know, with the cloud's basically almost free at this point, I mean, mm -hmm. Amazon's saying they're going to drop prices. That's the core asset. Exactly. It's people, open source is free, you know, software's free, so the cloud's a little bit expensive, but yeah, go yep. continue, go ahead. So if you can make your engineers much more effective, that's actual dollars in the bank, right? Yeah. So talk about um, what, what the product is, and just give a quick uh, overview of what the product is, the value proposition, and why someone would, would contact you guys. Good. Sure, uh, so there's a few things that we focus on at Quality. One is increasing uh, your test suite time by 10, 20, 100 times, depending on the parallelization level you're comfortable with. And this actually wasn't possible until services like Amazon EC2, where now computation is so ubiquitous and so cheap you can actually just throw computation on the problem and take, you know, with one of our customers, 80 minutes worth of tests down to six minutes, which is extraordinary. And another big thing that we want was we can actually verify code before it goes into the code base. So no bad code can go in. So for another customer, we took their 40 build breaks a month down to zero, which is huge. So you guys basically accelerate the identification of bugs, basically, and can get code tested. How do you do it? What's the secret sauce? Uh, what's the secret sauce for yours? Everyone's got the secret sauce. Is it machine learning? Is it math? Is it algorithms? Mm -hmm. Is it just process? What's, uh, you know, to tell the exact secret it sauce. Is, it but is gives very, a taste of it. very great distributed systems and also operating systems knowledge that mm -hmm. makes things shard really well and run really quickly and also utilizing uh, AWS and EC2 very effectively and helping manage that particular cloud. Okay, so name some of the customers you guys work on. I know you guys can say a few names and then we'll go into some of the use cases around you know, when, how someone would use, use you guys. Yeah, so the, uh, the largest name we can actually say is One Kings Lane. We do have a very large file sharing customer as well as a, uh, I guess you would say a sharing economy customer that mm -hmm. we also support. And some of the big wins we've had for them uh, one of them had their testing times taken from 80 minutes to six, which for them translates into roughly a 10 or 15% productivity increase, which is like 20 engineers, right? So the old days, I'm old, I'm, you guys are young guns, mm -hmm. I'm like the old guy close to 50, you know, late 40s, but back in my day, you'd have to lay out some serious gear to do test dev, mm -hmm. right? So now with virtualization and cloud, a lot of coolness can happen there. So describe some of the coolness that you guys do. Is it parallel machines, you guys using virtualization? What's the, what are some of the coolness that allows you guys to do this at scale? Because remember, people want to scale possibly for use cases that might be at certain scales, and you can't get gear for that. So talk about how you guys boot that up. Jordan, you want to handle this? You want to uh, try that? I would love cool. to. I would say all of the above. Um, for one company in particular, the biggest customer of ours, the file sharing one that we shouldn't actually name, but I think you know who it is. Uh, for them, we're actually managing 200 large EC2 instances on Amazon simultaneously, which is just a lot of computation, which I think there's a lot of secret sauces involved in quality, but in all honesty, 80% of the solution is just throwing computation hardware at the problem. So I think of all things, that's something very exciting that we're doing. So you're managing, the, say that number again, how many instances? Um, 200 right now, and it'll be going up very, very quickly. So these, do you guys run spot, spot instances to run, spin up compute for them, or do um, you guys? These are, these are actually reserved instances, but mm -hmm. uh, that actually allows us to dynamically scale. So at the max, it goes up to 200 instances, and when they're not using them, it automatically scales back down. 
Yes, definitely catering to the Amazon philosophy of you have competition when you need it and you exactly. pay for it by the hour. You guys take advantage of auto scaling on that? Uh, so Quality actually manages the scaling for you depending on what you need from your test runs. So as of right now, we're doing it manually. But we're, now we're becoming more and more comfortable with Amazon AWS software. And so with that, we're exploring other services as well. Yeah, we actually don't have a need for auto scaling because we know exactly when you need a certain number of machines and exactly when you don't need them anymore. Mm -hmm. So we have it as perfect as it can get. So it's not a big feature for you guys. You guys can do that manually. Exactly. Okay, so talk about some of the use cases um, where you've been successful and some of the ones you think are going to be um, the bread and butter for your, for your business. Because obviously I can envision mm -hmm the scale being pretty significant you know, um, for you guys. But right now, where are people using you? Why would someone come to you? What's the use cases of the engineering teams? And what, what are they doing? Engineering teams that really care about their efficiency have some kind of agile process, but also have large testing times, tend to find lots and lots of value from us. And we've also noticed that teams that have grown very quickly, a lot of times, have the test suites that are large, but could find tons of value from quality since they haven't actually done much work around them themselves. Give me, give me a number of like, size of the teams you guys work with, engineering, engineering teams? Yeah, so uh, most of our customers are between 30 and 200 engineers. Um, that's not including like QA or other roles, just plain engineers. And most of them have actually been around, they're most relatively recent companies, so most of them have been around since at least 2007 or 2006. What are they saying about the service? They're like, they love you guys, they say, hey, we can't live without you. Most that's of them are the, saying. the norm in Amazon, like, products, mm. it just works. So Most of them are saying, finally. I think, I think developers have gotten a lot of attention and a lot of spotlights. We're getting new frameworks, new libraries, we're building this phenomenal community, but I think tools have not kept up with the fast pace of developer community. And so a lot of people are saying, finally, something actually exists that works for me, that's pleasant to use and simple to maintain. You know, and you, it's actually a joy, right? We got a standing ovation when we actually, <laughs> so one of the companies switched their entire engineering of 100 people over onto the service, and we got a standing ovation when they actually presented it. It's like, <laughs> you guys are using this now. Yeah, you know, first of all, we, we, love, we love to hear stories like that. You know, we have, uh, we work with companies like ServiceNow and Splunk, mm -hmm. and their customer base is like, are so loyal to them like when they launch a new product, because if you think about Splunk and say ServiceNow, Splunk in particular is much more notable in the big data world. They took essentially data waste log mm -hmm. files and basically took that pain away from slogging through log files. I mean, yeah. it doesn't look good on paper, oh yeah, yeah, but what it does for the customer. So you guys seem a little bit like that where you're solving some pain today for yep. customers, at the same time possibly enabling. So I want to ask you, what is that enablement for the engineering teams? Okay, you take the pain away through the automation. Um, like Splunk, they're in customers because they were free to do other stuff. It ended up becoming a huge platform. They end up going public. So, so what is your next step? When you take that pain away, you start automating, mm -hmm. start automating some of the test dev, mm -hmm. what's that next enablement? What do you guys, what's your vision? The ultimate vision for us is to make engineers as effective as possible. So I always like to say, when I was in college, right, uh, at Carnegie Mellon, I wrote an operating system in a matter of weeks. And you can't do that in industry. You just can't, because there's so much process in place, there's deployment, you have to go check for bugs. If you can make engineers as effective as that, then you can make, the entire, the entire world could move forward maybe two times, three times faster than it currently is. Technology could advance that much faster. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't really think it's possible to ever get to how it was in college, but you can definitely make tremendous gains, and for us, our vision is just to make engineers so much more effective that all they have to think about is coding and that's it. All right, so that's good. So I'll, I'll ask about the operating system after the interview because I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I wrote one in the 80s, but that was different. It was on a VAX, but that's a whole other story. The, uh, I want to ask you though specifically, what, what vision around the code? Because that vision is uh, definitely awesome, right? But let's talk about like, what tech will you add next? I mean, in your mind, if you knock this down right now and you get that automation going, you, you save a lot of time for the engineers, obviously there's going to be creativity. Mm -hmm. So there's got clearly a, a, you know, more of a you know, feel good, feel good uh, benefit, but specifically, what tech are you eyeing? Like, okay, when we're done with this, we're going to bolt on some other tech on top of it. Do you have any, any thoughts on that? What do, what do you see? Just, just not the, there's no really right answer on this one, but it's more of the That's vision. Fair. What's um, next? I think we should be careful about leaking too much secret sauce, obviously. <laughs> um, but I think the next, we'll be open about the next big step for us. Uh, we're very excited about continuous deployments. Since we have so much technology for like managing these virtual machines, provisioning them to be like your production environment, so on and so forth, you can read a lot more about onqualitycode.com. 
But beside all that, with all the technology, it's not too far-fetched to think the next thing for quality is actually managing your continuous deployment. So talk about the size of the company. Where you guys at? Obviously TechCrunch Disrupt is a kind of a, a startup, early stage startup. You guys funded, mm -hmm. you have VC funding, you bootstrapped. What's the head count, what's the yeah. plan? So uh, we're currently seven people and we've been funded, VC funded since day one. From who? Which uh, VCs? So uh, FF Angel uh, it was the first ones in. Index, Felices, uh, the Web Investment Network, and Ray Tonsing. Awesome. Well guys, congratulations. I think you're on something really cool. You know, like I said, I totally agree that, you know, I've always said, you know, the Silicon Angle and stuff we're doing with the queue, it's all about the people. And we had the chief security officer on from Amazon and he talked about security paradigms. Yeah. We're coming back down, everything's about the people, right? Yeah. And then these days with the connected web, um, making value for people, freeing them up, automating away the, the hassles, that's the future. So congratulations, big, big fan Thank of your you. work. Uh, we're here live at Amazon. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Hot start up here inside the queue. Venture backed, funded, seven people. Uh, what's the growth rate? What do you guys want to get to next year? Any hiring engineers? We are definitely hiring engineers. Yeah. Where's your headquarters, San Francisco? San Francisco, right next to the Caltrain station in Soma. Cool. And you went to Carnegie Mellon, where'd you go to school? Stanford. Stanford, so okay, not bad schools. They have decent computer science programs there. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that one before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be right back after this short break. Um, get some alums from Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, great programs. This is a new generation right here. This is, this is what it's all about at Amazon. This is a generational philosophy, DevOps, Amazon Innovation, we'll be right back at this short break.